Hey everyone, I'm Catfire. I'm a music producer, songwriter, and DJ from Los Angeles, California. I've had a few number one Beatport charting tracks in the past, which I guess is a cool thing. Lately, I've been working with a lot of Japanese labels as a producer, songwriter, and also a remixer, so I've been doing a lot of stuff around that part of the world. And today I'm going to show you some of my favorite features in Studio One 4. But first, here's a little taste of what you can do with it. Let's go. So the first feature I want to talk about is the chord track. If you're not familiar with it, you're in for a surprise. It's pretty impressive. So I have my demo song for Studio One 4 loaded right here. It's called Sakura and you can download it from your PreSonus user account. And you'll notice that you have chords right here at the top on the chord track, which you can show and hide by pressing this button. So what I'm going to do now is change this D flat into a G flat and see how that sounds. So that's how it sounds originally. All we have to do is double click the D flat chord, then you have this wheel, and pick any chord you want. In this case, I'm gonna pick a G flat because I know for a fact that's gonna sound pretty cool. I also wanna show it to you in this section right here, which is the drop. So this is what it sounds like originally. So let's just mess around with it while it's playing. You can see how this is an incredible tool to just experiment with new chord progressions and find new ideas. The next feature I want to show you guys is patterns. Let's start with the drum mode pattern. The way this differs from a normal MIDI clip is that once you create this one pattern, you can extend it indefinitely, which is a really cool way to populate your track very fast because you don't have to duplicate things, you don't have to slice it up, you don't have to copy paste, just create the one bar and extend it. Any changes you make to the original pattern alter everything that comes after it. you can see that it's being updated in real time. Now imagine that you want to do a fill at bar eight. How would you do that? Very easy. Just snip it right there, double click, and you'll see here on the inspector that we have a thing called variations. You just press the duplicate variation to create basically a new pattern. And then let's add another kick, a couple snares, and pretty cool, right? So now if we duplicate everything, we have a variation one, variation two, variation one again, variation two again. And whenever we change anything on the first variation, you can see that it changes both instances. And the same thing applies to the fills. This is incredibly useful because it means that you can have your whole drum section sequenced very quickly and you can make any changes at any time without having to delete things and just making sure that every single MIDI clip that has your beat has been updated. Now I'm going to show you the melodic mode which works exactly like the drum mode but it looks a little different. If you look at the editor it looks more like a step sequencer because well it is a step sequencer. It's super easy to just make an ARP or maybe a bass line and have it extend throughout your whole track and always 
keep it in check. The last thing I want to show you about patterns is this little button right here, which opens your automation lanes. This is where you control things like velocity, repeat, and probability. Pretty sweet. Now let's talk about Impact XT. As you can see, it's been completely revamped from the old version. For starters, you have all these sweet colors, which kind of helps you keep track if you have different instances. You can also pick colors for each of the pads. So my cake is red, my snare is blue, etc. And these colors actually update on the atom. So if I change the snare from blue to yellow, there you go. Pretty handy. So there are three really exciting new features in Impact XT that I want to talk about. The first one is that we now have eight banks to choose from, which means that we went from 16 pads to 128. That's a lot of sounds. The second great thing about Impact XT is that you can now quantize individual pads. And you might be wondering, why would I want to quantize pads? Because you can now use it as a live performance tool. Check this out. Did you notice how everything lined up perfectly, including the hat loop? The third thing is the follow tempo option. You can now have individual pads following the tempo of your song. Let's check this hats loop. It already says follow tempo, which means it's enabled. So it's playing at 150 BPM. But let's make it 174 and see what happens. This is an incredible feature because you can just change the BPM at any time. And if you have any loops playing from within Impact XT, everything is going to follow the BPM that you set it to. So one of the most impressive things about Studio One 4 is the new Sample One called Sample One XT. As you can see, it's been also revamped and it kind of looks like Mai Tai and Impact XT. So they're keeping with the same design language and perhaps the new most impressive feature about it is that you can record from any source within Studio One. And when I mean any source, I mean any source. If we check the drop down box, we have all of our inputs from our Studio 2.4 interface. We have our buses, instrument tracks, outputs, and just individual tracks. And I can record directly from any of these into Sample One XT. In this case, I am just going to record directly from the output, the main master bus. So let's do this. Now, what can I do with this? Well, there's another new feature called slices. To create slices, all you need to do is right click, create slices, and now check this out. We just recorded the master output of our track and we're pretty much remixing already. Now the last really cool thing about Sample One XT is the effects. It comes with chorus, flanger, phaser, delay, reverb, gator, EQ, distortion, and pan. It's got everything you need to shape your sounds and make them really, really unique. But let's just add a reverb and see how that works out. The last feature I want to cover is kind of a secret because not a lot of people know it exists. It's been in Studio One for a while, but it's really, really useful. It's called Music Loops. So what is a Music Loop? It's a proprietary file that's exclusive to Studio One that you can just do this. Notice how I just dragged a clip, a drum clip, onto my desktop and it created this Music Loop file. Here's why it's cool. We're going to create a new project, go to our browser, and drag it back. Check this out. 
it not only imported the MIDI information, it imported the instrument with the same routing and the same inserts. Now we're going to create another music loop with this growl track right here. Let's first take a listen. Snippity snip and drag it onto the desktop. Now we're going to move to our other project. Just drag it here and there you go. It loaded the same instance, same volume, same insert with the same settings. You can see how this becomes really useful if you want to create your own sample folders that have like recurring sounds they use a lot, maybe a particular drum pattern or a bass sound. This just makes it super easy to keep things organized and just bring back that awesome sound that you use over and over again. I hope you guys enjoy this quick overview of my favorite features in Studio One 4. I'm Catfire, and if you're interested in Studio One 4, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer.